of the system. On one link, you don't need three, three pair. It's all digital. This is futuristic. Let's move forward. Firefighter telephone system. The merits of an emergency communication system or a backup telephone system of a building are immense. Many people think that if something happens in my facility, I'll pick up the phone, I'll call for help. A lot of times, that's impossible. Power is no longer available, systems go down, or if the system's working, nine times out of ten it's going to be overloaded. One of the learnings that came out of the unfortunate events on 9-11 from the terrorist attacks. People were calling. Anybody who knows how the telephone system works realizes that eventually as your trunks come in, they're going to hit a congestion point. Although you may have multiple branches within the facility, that funnels into a common line that can only hold so many conversations. So the emergency telephone system is a very important requirement for when everything else fails in your building and you need help and you're stuck and there's smoke billowing through the hallways and up the staircases and in the elevator shaft and you need to get somebody's attention so that they can attend to you and save you or your wife or your wife and your baby. You pick up your emergency telephone, call the control room and get the assistance you need. Third party equipment, we understand. We understand the need for installers, end users, specifiers to save costs. Life is expensive. You want to do background paging, non-emergency paging, have background music into your system, tie in, provide notification to some other communication system already in the building. We have third party interfaces that we test before you have to. We can provide compliant products to do your integrations for your background music, for your third party mass notification interface. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to do your job. Let us do the hard work. If you're so inclined to shy away from the modern, from the Ethernet enabled integration, software based communications, tons of hardware ports, relays, whatever you need. We boast and we're confident that there is no integration we cannot successfully install. I mentioned the enclosures already. Let's talk about the networks. Networks are complicated. Even if you look at your own personal office networks, you have laptops, you have desktops, you have servers, large monitors, small monitors, CRT, LCD, touchscreen, they're all over the place. Why does a network panel always have to be the same size? Pick the panel that meets your needs. Enhanced survivability, local and global notification. Conversation we had today. Redundancy is a very important issue. A lot of engineers spec, is your panel redundant? Your panel shall be redundant or it shall not touch the earth upon which I walk. Our panel has 15 processors. 15 digital signal processors. There is no one point of failure in this panel. If by some act of force majeure, as we say in English. 14 of those CPUs go down and one little CPU remains. One little intelligent for loop adder card remains. And that for loop adder card is operational. Local notification through the built-in alarm dry contact relay. Can you get more redundant than that? Here we talk about a few of the features. I don't want to bore you. The team in India is here to answer your questions. If you want to take down some notes, feel free. We'll provide you with some brochures afterwards. 
The rest of the few slides here I'm going to skip through kind of quickly. 63 nodes network, scalability, command center operation, data gathering panel, ACU, LOCs, peer-to-peer -peer networking, ARCnet communications protocol, class B or class A wiring, 4,000 feet of copper between the nodes 2 kilometers on multi-mode fiber or 5 kilometers on single-mode fiber. One-way and two-way advanced audio-video communications, audio-voice communications. I just misspoke. Wait for next year. Supports live paging, network telephony, modular amplifier construction. Start with four amplifiers in your main panel. You can expand that. Add two more tubs, 900 watts of audio in the system. Many thousands of watts network-wide. UL 2572 approval for mass notification. It's been a long time. It's, it's been a long time, and pardon me for being excited, but it's been a long time since we could really come and thump our chest and say, you didn't want to use us. You weren't interested. You called us and also ran. You said, we're me too. I have no time for you. I have my product. We can now demonstrate our leadership in product development, in R&D, in moving the industry forward by being one of only three companies and the most recent to have developed a panel that meets the regulatory requirements of UL 2572 standard for control equipment for mass notification systems. For you. Wide area and distributed recipient mass notification systems. This is the future of our industry. I had the fortunate opportunity a couple days back to speak in Calcutta at the FSAI first anniversary. Uh, I learned some, uh, some sad stories of, of recent events that happened in Calcutta. Of course, no product was going to do much to affect the type of situation that we saw there. But these advances in technology for our industry, such as the wide area interface, so no longer do you have people entering into a dangerous situation from the exterior of a building. And the distributed recipient mass notification system, which allows you to communicate in any language particular to a registered individual in a database for a site installation, so that even the elderly can understand exactly what to do and exactly what's happening. These are the type of innovations that truly, on a worldwide level, improve protection of people and property. This is the heart of your mass notification system. Local operating consoles. I gave the example of how a mass notification system is, is an advantage. Or how does it differ from fire alarm systems themselves? What is distinctive about them? The example I gave was, imagine you're at a school facility. And this school has some children of high up government officials. And there's some nefarious characters with maybe their own political agenda that have determined the best way to have their voice heard and attract the media attention is to kidnap the children of a high ranking government official. So they need a way to capture this child. Having paid attention to the emergency response procedure for most schools, they realize that fire alarm system goes off. What does everyone do? They evacuate. Let's funnel everybody out the front door. Fire, go, bells, horns, sirens, woo! Everyone's going out the front door. One by one, child is taken, child is taken, child is taken, child is taken, your child is taken. This was the situation of times back. Fast forward, 2012. Same sequence of events, same nefarious character, pulls the same manual station, initiates the fire alarm system. Evacuation begins. One person from the rooftop, top floor of that building, peeks outside. They see what's happening take an assessment of the situation. I don't smell smoke. Something's odd, awkward. Rifles are present. Someone's pointing a rifle at a child. 
something's wrong. What can I do? The fire alarm system has ultimate priority. The fire alarm system is going off, people are evacuating. No! I shout. Don't let the kids outside! It's dangerous! Nobody hears. Now, according to NFPA 72 2010 and the technological advances we've made in the tools presented to emergency response personnel, disaster recovery specialists, you walk over to your LOC. The fire alarm system is active. Stay in place. Go to your area of refuge. It's a false alarm. 